Hello, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Now, today is uh, July 14th at 12.30 a.m. in the morning. I couldn't wait to do this video till tomorrow. Um, you all know that they found cocaine in the White House, right? Would you believe me if I told you that that's not the first time they found drugs in the White House? Well, I'm here to show you something. They found cocaine what, a week ago, two weeks ago, whenever it was. They've also found, at two separate occasions, marijuana. So, uh, there's a couple, um, there's a couple videos here I want to show you in a news article. Because... I don't. I think we should talk about the marijuana and the cocaine, and how they didn't find anybody guilty. So, anyways, here's a video. This is Newsmax. It says breaking marijuana was also found at the White House. So let's take a listen. Says they've identified no suspects in the White House cocaine probe, if there was even one. But that's not all, Congressman. We also learned the Secret Service discovered marijuana at least two times last year, but they never bothered to mention it to anybody in the United States. Crazy. Uh, wh what's going on? Is, is the Secret Service now among the ranks of the FBI, the DOJ, and the IRS as just <laughs> another government organization dedicated to covering up for the Biden, sir? Oh, of course. Well, if you're a hardworking American and you see this, you begin to think that very thing, that you, you can't trust that the system doesn't work anymore. It's, it's all generated around Joe Biden. The fact that found marijuana, cocaine in the White House should worry all of us. Just from a, from a, a, a standpoint, it's a, it's a, it's a, ch it's a challenge it's to the president and his, and his, and his well-being. So the fact that they had this one-week investigation and came out with nothing, I think it concerns me a lot. But, uh, you know, I mean, you got Hunter Biden. We know he's on drugs. We know he's on cocaine. <laughs> we know he's on drugs. We know he's on cocaine. Of course we know that, right? Probably was his. But I guess we can't prove it. And like you say, they've just... I guess we can't. ...left it under the rug and we move on. But it's an important thing. Frankly, I would think the Secret Service would want to know because it is... Uh, it, it, they're, they're there to protect the president. And having marijuana and cocaine in the White House does not bode well for that. Well, somebody's not doing their job. Yeah, under that rug in the White House. I'm kind of afraid to look under the rug in the White House, afraid of what I might find, Congressman Roger Williams. Yeah. Sir, thank you very much. I appreciate you getting here and talking with us today on the right. Salcedo Show. So, yeah, that's, uh, they didn't find nothing, no, nothing, right? Pretty crazy that they didn't, but I'm going to either, sh I'm going to show you something. We're going to, I wonder how they're they're hiding this because either they're lying about the white house and not finding anything no dna no fingerprints or they're lying about this in many many cases there's this thing called touch dna okay it's like this i touch this i kill somebody i put this down i leave they come along and swab that and get my dna off that's what they call touch dna okay so how did they not get anything off that bag of Coke or those bags of marijuana, right? So we're going to watch another video here, this small clip of the WJZ Baltimore, and they're going to talk about it. And then I'm going to read a part of an article. Changing the way crimes are solved here in Maryland. Thanks for staying with WJZ. I'm Nikki Zizaza. And I'm Rick Ritter. Now, the big story we're following at 530, it's a database housing DNA in Maryland helping to solve crimes. But here's the problem. The system is decades old, but what's new, advancements in technology now, that can actually lift these profiles from crime scenes and victims as well. WJZ takes you inside a state forensic lab. Christina Mendez is speaking with a scientist who walks us through how this system is helping catch criminals while clearing others. 
Technology is becoming more and more sensitive to picking up DNA from small or even compromised samples. This includes something called touch DNA, which forensic scientists say is exactly how it sounds. My skin cells would transfer right onto this GoPro after touching it, leaving behind a DNA profile on an object. So think, okay, this pop bottle. Say that this was just a bottle that was sitting out and it didn't have condensation on it. And I picked it up, put it down, left. My brother came in, picked it up, set it down on the garbage can to put in the garbage in the recycling. And then my wife picked it up and put it in the recycling bin. Okay? Now there's three DNAs on there. How do you decipher which one was first? Well, you can't. You'll never be able to figure out which one was first. So you see what I'm saying? For one, touch DNA could be nailing people that shouldn't be in jail. Not that uh, I'm for any of that, but... DNA is your calling card, your signature. It plays a key role in solving crimes from catching suspects to clearing others. Maryland's DNA database functions out of the State Police Forensic Sciences Division Lab in Pikesville, where this month the 10,000th positive DNA match or hit was made. It took 22 years to get our first 5,000 hits, and then these last 5,000 hits have come just within six years. A hit happens when DNA from a victim or crime scene matches a DNA profile in a database called CODIS, a term you've probably heard thrown around on TV, crime shows, and movies. It stands for the Combined DNA Index System. It links crimes to individuals in the database across jurisdictions. Advancements in technology are helping to grow. If I can't recommend a show that uh, does a lot of talking about this type of stuff. It's an older show from, I think, like 90s, late 90s maybe, something like that. It's called Forensics Files. Um, there's a ton of episodes, tons of, it's, it, tons of episodes and series. Um, they now have Forensics Files 2 out. That's, that's, I don't know when they were recorded, but. It's a new TV series. Um, check them out because you can learn a lot about this stuff off that. Oh, the DNA database. We're at the point where we can get reliable DNA profiles from not just blood stains or visible stains, but now we're dealing with touch DNA, where people are simply transferring their DNA by coming in contact with something. Touch DNA is what gave Adnan Syed his first taste of real freedom after spending more than 20 years in prison. Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby says shoes Heyman Lee was wearing at the time of her 1999 murder came back with a DNA mixture of multiple contributors. Syed was not one, clearing him from the case. But who that DNA may belong to is being held close to the vest. I can't tell you or reveal anything at this point because it's open and pending. It would be prejudicial to the individuals um, that have not yet been charged. Lee's murder is just one of thousands of examples showing how science and technology work together in criminal cases. Oh yeah, see what I'm saying? Touch DNA? Like if you and your wife are in the same house and then somebody kills your wife and they lift the DNA off it and it's only your DNA left on there, you're busted for something you didn't do, right? Um, I was going to read this, but this is pretty much what we just, um, what we just saw. It just tells you about the touch DNA and how that guy got off and that i just i don't understand how they can t decipher between the stock person at walmart or the killer or you right because you have the stock person that stocks the shelves you buy it there's another person the cashier if you don't do self-checkout there's another person you go home your husband there's another person you go home then your child grabs it. There's another, you know, like, was it the murderer? Was it the cashiers? Because you can't tell what was put on there first. That's just my thought, I, to be uh, honest with you. But anyways, I wanted to put this out there. Uh, I haven't seen it. Anybody else pretty much talking about it yet. So 
Hopefully somebody will watch this video once or twice. Take care. We'll see you guys in the next one. God bless.